Hi friends, welcome to Biology Exams for you.com. Today's topic of our discussion is DNA fingerprinting or DNA profiling. At the end of this discussion, you will be able to understand what is a DNA fingerprint, why we have unique DNA prints, historical background regarding the discovery of DNA fingerprinting by Sir Alec Jeffrey, principle behind the procedure, the difference between mini satellite and micro satellite, two methods that is RFLP based DNA fingerprinting and PCR based DNA fingerprinting within 5 to 10 minutes. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and support this channel. Let's begin with an example. As we all know, fingerprint is unique to an individual. We are all having unique fingerprints. Just like our fingerprint, DNA fingerprinting is a technique of distinguishing individuals from a DNA sample according to their unique DNA print patterns. So this is a DNA fingerprint pattern that is isolated from a sample from a crime scene. So this is a print pattern. So we are having suspects. So these are the suspects, suspect 1, 2 and 3. So by comparing the print pattern, it is very easy to identify the suspect. So you can see suspect 2 is having a similar print pattern indicating the presence of that suspect at the crime scene. So this is widely used in forensic science. So each individual is having a unique print pattern. Now why we have unique DNA prints? After the completion of Human Genome Project, now we know that the genetic similarity between human and human is 99.9%. .9%. You and me are 99.9% .9 similar. Then what makes the difference? How our DNA prints become unique? There are approximately 3 billion base pairs. This 0.1% difference corresponds to approximately 3 million base pairs that differs in order. Let me make it more clear. So this word POST, P-O-S-T, if it is in different order, it can be STOP, it can be POTS or it can be SPOT. So we are having the same letters but all are making different meanings. Just like our DNA, it is made up of A, G, C, T. These four letters are arranged differently so that this 3 million base pairs will be slightly different. That makes us unique. So this 0.1% difference enables DNA fingerprinting. Now moving into the history of DNA fingerprinting. The technique was developed by Sir Alec Jeffrey in 1984 from Leicester University. This is the paper that is published in Letter to Nature in 1985 regarding DNA fingerprinting or human DNA fingerprints by Jeffrey Wilson and Dane. Later in the same year, he published another paper indicating the application of DNA fingerprinting in forensic science. Now, what is the principle behind the procedure? The principle behind the procedure is to find out the microsatellites or mini satellites. Mini satellite refers to repetitive non coding short DNA sequences of 10 to 60 base pairs, whereas microsatellites are sequences of 6 to 9 base pairs just like this. So this is a microsatellite. As you can see, it is made up of 2, 4, 6, 7 base pairs. So this is continuously repeating in a genome, C A C A T T A. Then it is repeating, then this is third one. So this is continuously repeating. Such non-coding repetitive sequences that occur successively or in tandem are called as mini satellites or micro satellites depending on the size or depending on the number of base pairs. So in the procedure we will be using a probe just like this. So here the micro satellite is C A C A T T A. So we will be using a probe that is G T G T A A T that will that is a complementary strand that can bind to this micro satellite. So that we will be getting unique print pattern. So this prop will be radioactively labeled or maybe fluorescently labeled. So we'll be discussing the procedure later. So why these microsatellites are important? Individuals vary in size, number and location of mini satellites or microsatellites. It is also called as 
variable number of tandem repeats as it differs with different individuals. So each individual is having unique number or unique size or the location of mini satellite will be unique for each individual so that we can distinguish individuals based on the distribution of microsatellite or mini satellite in the genome. Now moving into the procedure, first one is RFLP based DNA fingerprinting. This was a technique actually developed by Alec Jeffrey. Step one is DNA extraction from the sample, maybe from cell, maybe from blood. Then the next step is restriction digestion. It means we are using a restriction enzyme just like eco R1. Uh, this restriction enzyme will cleave GAATTC. Whenever this GAATTC sequence appears, it makes a cleave. So that we'll be getting different fragments. This is called as RFLP based. Depending on the genome, this GAATTC, the number of this sequence may differ. That results in different in length of the DNA fragments in different individuals. In the next step, we'll be electrophorizing these so that the bands are separated by electrophoresis. Shorter DNA fragments will move quickly whereas longer ones remain at the top. We'll be getting a band pattern. So each individual will be having different band pattern as this, the number of GAATTC will be different in different individual. So here itself there is a differentiation. That is why this is called as restriction fragment length polymorphism. So the fragment length will be different in different individual upon the usage of a specific restriction enzyme as the genome of each individual is different. So here the separation takes place then that is transferred. Next step is plotting. It is actually southern plotting as DNA is involved. Plotting means the transfer. This is in a gel. The selective forces occurs in a gel. Transfer of this DNA bands from this gel to the membrane. A nitrocellulose membrane is called as plotting. So we have transferred this band from this gel to this nitrocellulose membrane. Step five is we are prob we are, we are using radio labeled or fluorescent labeled probe against the mini satellite. So a number of mini satellite will be detected, will be tested so that accuracy will be more and this mini satellite probe will bind to the complementary sequence. Then excess probe is washed out. Then there then will be auto radiography if it is radio labeled auto radiography will be getting this print pattern. So this print pattern will be different for different individuals. So this is the first method developed by Alec Jeffrey. First there is RFLP or restriction fragment length polymorphism then followed by probing for mini satellite. Here the disadvantage is if the sample the amount of sample is less the procedure is very difficult and procedure takes time also as southern plotting is involved. Now the second method that is PCR based DNA fingerprinting. In this method also step one is DNA sample extraction. So here there is no restriction digestion we have isolated the DNA then we are using PCR to amplify the sample. So even though the sample the quantity of sample is very low we can amplify it very easily using PCR or polymerase chain reaction. So we'll be using specific primers or STR primers that is specifically targeted to amplify short tandem repeats or mini satellite regions. So this is fluorescently labeled. So this primer will bind to the sequence and we'll be getting labeled STRs. Newly labeled STR strands will be formed upon PCR reaction so this will amplify very much the sample will be very much greatly amplified and this primer is as as the primer is fluorescently labeled we'll be getting labeled short tandem repeats or short sequences then these fragments are subjected to electrophoresis so that these fragments are separated based on size here cap in the case of capillary 
electrophoresis as we know then there will be detection based on fluorescence or laser induced fluorescence detection so there will be a detector this is fluorescently labeled this may be fluorescein or rhodamine all are fluorescent labels when these fragments are exposed to particular wavelength of laser beam there will be fluorescence and there will be a fluorescence detector nearby and that will be converted to signals just like this using different softwares so we'll be getting different peaks depending on the fluorescence so this peak or this prints or this pattern will be unique for each individual so that we can compare this with different samples so here this electrophoresis is a capillary electrophoresis where uh, fluorescent detection is possible. So this is how PCR-based DNA fingerprinting works. Here the advantage is we require less amount of sample. There is no southern plotting. So there is no restriction digestion. The procedure is somewhat simple and time saving. Now the applications of DNA fingerprinting. So as we mentioned to settle disputed parentage, so let's take an example. This is the mom print pattern. This is dad print pattern. So these are the daughters T1, T2, S1 and S2. By comparing the print pattern, it's very easy to identify. This T1 is a real daughter. Then this S1 is a real son. You can compare the pan pattern, this mom and dad will share some band patterns with their kids or with their children so that by comparing this we can find out the real daughter and son now in forensic science we have already discussed in pedigree analysis in man dog cat etc to find out uh, different breeds or different strains then to confirm cell line identity in a cell line collection if we have a cell line collection so each cell line will be having a unique pattern so that we can differentiate morphologically similar cell lines then diagnosis of inherited disease disorders in both prenatal and newborn newborn babies by print pattern we could distinguish or uh, the presence or absence of a particular disorder like cystic fibrosis hemophilia etc now developing cures for inherited disorders by studying the DNA fingerprints of relatives. So tracing out the history, we can have some precautions or cures for inherited disorders and to identify DNA patterns associated with a disease. So easy identification of a disease, easy diagnosis of a disease. These are all applications of DNA fingerprinting. Hope you understand the concept. Thank you so much for your support. Please subscribe, support and share. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com.